Today we're going to learn about copyright basics. And remember, I'm a teacher, not a lawyer, so I'm simplifying this for my students and for others who want to understand it. Our essential questions today are, what is copyright? How long does it last? What are the kinds of copyright? How can I copyright my own work? How can I find works that I can use freely or easily search? And we'll use Google and Flickr. Do I still have to give credit for the work and uh, by giving the name and that sort of thing? And how can I buy licenses for professional work? And what are the penalties for not following copyright? Um, what is copyright? It's an original work is automatically protected by copyright. A lot of people think that you have to have the copyright symbol on the page. You do not. The moment it's created, it immediately becomes the property of the author who created the work. Now, there are two notable exceptions. If it's a work for hire, you were hired to do it. It becomes the property of the company, not you. And if you're a student, then your school will typically claim the copyright. Uh, so you have to be careful if you create things on school computers, unless they have an exception for you. Now, copyright starts of uh, the moment of creation until 70 years after the author's death, unless it was prior to 1970 and there's other rules you'll have to look up. If it's anonymous or a work from hire, for hire, it's 95 years from publication or 120 years from creation, whichever is shorter. Then it becomes part of public domain, which means you can just pretty much use it. There's a ton of stuff out there in public domain, including the works of William Shakespeare and lots of older classic works. Um, the copyright can be renewed, so be careful and look for the copyright marks, which are usually at the bottom of web pages and that sort of thing, in the front of books. Now clearly state the copyright. Here's a couple of examples. Now this first example here, I have copyrighted to my company, which is Cool Cat Teacher LLC, and I've stated all rights reserved. Um, I do that a lot of times because sometimes I'll create a commons and sometimes I'll all rights reserved. You have to be real careful if you're publishing um, articles um, or if you're publishing things with publishers to keep it all rights reserved because they'll usually give you the right to talk about it as the author but not others so you have to be real careful about that um, and then this is a license to me and remember there is a difference for how long it lasts based, based upon whether it's you as an individual or the company so a lot of times people like to put it in their name um, if you see something without all rights reserved, it is all rights reserved. So if you just look at 2015 Victoria A. Davis, that means all rights reserved. You don't have to state it. It's assumed it's all rights reserved if it just says 215 and the person's name or the company. Um, fair use. Now, this is an interesting one for educators and for students. Um, when you give a report, when you do things, you are able to quote or to use copyright protected works. Now, does this does not mean that you can just copy an essay, copy photos and turn it in as your own. You still have to do what we call attribution and give credit. You can't just take things. That's what we call plagiarism. Uh, but you can use things in, in videos and photos and that sort of thing. Now, be real careful, though, if you're going to put it in an app that you're going to charge money for, your school's going to charge, you can't just take it. Um, and not all academic uses are fair use. Just be really, really careful claiming fair use. Uh, there are a lot of people who like to kind of stretch it. But, but you want to be careful. And most academic institutions want to be real careful because they technically own the works of their students, not the students. So they're the ones that will be sued in a case. So when in doubt, obtain permission. And even if my students can claim fair use, I like them to follow copyright laws because I want them to be prepared for a world where they can't just copy and take everything out there. Um, now, the Creative Commons license is awesome. It was created by Lawrence Lessig. Many people think of him as a hero because he created this license. A lot of people call this the CC license. So if you see CC, it's the Creative Commons license, and it lets you have free distribution of things that could, uh, that is actually copyrighted. Because remember, the moment you create it, it is copyrighted. And we use this when we want to share, use, and build upon a work that we've created. We want to let other people do that. And lots of us, re, re, you know, do Creative Commons license for a lot of different things that we do. This is the Creative Commons website. This is where we find more information about Creative Commons. You just go to creativecommons.org. You can learn about the licenses or you can even pick a license. You can even search from here, although I've found it's easier to search at the other places. And we're going to choose a license and we're just going to kind of talk through this. So 
Adaptations means you're going to let somebody else change things around. So if they take your picture, can they morph the picture, can they add things to it? If the answer is yes, it's yes. If no, you don't want it changed, you just want it used originally, you can see that the license changes. So yes would mean uh, Attribution 4.0 International. No would be Attribution No Derivatives 4.0 International. How about this? Yes, as long as others share alike, I have Attribution Share Alike. 4.0 International. Now you can see here at the bottom, allow commercial uses of your work. And you can always hit the question mark if there are things that you don't uh, understand. But if you say yes, you let others copy, distribute, display, or perform the work, including for commercial purposes. So your picture may end up in a book, it could end up in a movie, anything. And that person could make millions. And if you're fine with that, great. A lot of people are. And if not, if you don't want them to do it for commercial, I'll typically say non-commercial and a lot of times I'll do share alike because if I'm going to let them remix it and get relicensed, I want them to share alike. So this is not a free culture license. There's something called a free culture which just means everything free. Um, now this is the little symbol here and you can see here that the symbol will change and you're going to put the title in here if you want to and get your details and what you're going to do if it's on a web page or if you're making an app like my students are You'll just right click and copy this information in and you can paste it into the HTML of your app or your blog. And this is the image you'll have. You can also right click and get this image. And you usually want to link. The nice thing about this is it links back to Creative Commons, which explains to the person what kind of license that this is. So this is how you license and what you do with that. Um, and if you don't understand how it works, you've got all kinds of information here to help you understand it. So now we want to find stuff that's Creative Commons uh, licensed. And I'm going to just look for, um, I'm doing an app, let's say I'm doing an app on Deer. Uh, I'm going to press Enter, and I see information on Deer. Now I'm going to go ahead and click Images, and I've got all these pictures. But if I hit Search Tools, and you see Usage Right, right now we're not filtering by license. And these correspond to the Creative Commons licenses. So reuse with modification means I can reuse it. Reuse just means I can reuse it any way I want to, but I can't modify it. Non-commercial reuse with modification means that I can reuse it and modify it. I just can't turn around and sell it. So I can't use it for commercial use. And non-commercial reuse means I can use it, but I can't modify it. So I typically will pick non-commercial reuse with modification. That's going to give you more results as long as it's not for sale. If your app is going to be for sale or if whatever it is is going to be for sale, you want to use those. Um, you want to uh, use this other license here, um, reuse with modification. It's going to give you less results, but it's, it's honest. Now, if I find what I want, see this is from Wikipedia, this is not from Wikipedia, I'm going to click it. And you don't really want to right click and copy from here. What you want to do is you want to view image. View image is going to make it as large as possible. Then you right click. You can save the image as. Save it onto your computer and reuse it. I will typically put a dash and put where I got it from uh, to cite the source. And you do want to keep up with that because you'll still have to cite the source of where you got it. Um, and you can visit the page and typically the source of information will be uh, this particular page here if you visit it. So you probably want to cite that as your source and copy it and put it in there and keep up with that. Particularly if you're writing a book or that sort of thing, you'll definitely want to do that. Now there's other places that you can search. Um, Flickr is a place where you can get lots of photos and you can um, search in a way that will let you, uh, if I search for deer here, um, I can click on more search types. Oh, let me go ahead and hit deer. And then it will give me a choice here to change my license. I can hit, it. see it says license here, Creative Commons, commercial use, or just modifications or how. Um, and if I want commercial use, I'm going to pick commercial use. And it's going to give me both of those dots. And so now these are things that I can use for commercial use. If it's not, I'll just turn that off. And these are um, lots of great pictures. You get really high quality photos from Flickr. And you can do it on other sites. So you always want to look for advanced search or you want to look for licensed search so that you make sure that you have permission for that. And there's one little piece that you do need to be aware of. Um, if a license says attribution, then you need to make sure you say the source that you got it from. So um, 
attribution means that they must credit you under the identical terms. So if they got it, then they would want to say, you know, from Vicki Davis or from whoever you are, uh, John Doe, that they got that license from you. And typically, it's good form to link to the original place you got it or the original website. So attribution means that you do have to say where you got it um, from, and you do want to double check and make sure that you can do that. You do have to give credit when you attribute. There's an old saying, you get what you pay for. And in this example, um, I use Canva. Now you can use Canva to make all kinds of graphics, but you can see this graphic has kind of what we call a watermark, or these lines. Now when I download it and use it, you won't see these lines, but you actually have to buy this from Canva, and they're just a dollar a piece. Um, and when you download it, it's gonna ask you to buy. This is what, call, what we call buying a license. And the way Canva's license works is you pay a dollar and you can download it anytime in 24 hours as you, as you work with it. But there are stock photo sites. Um, I stock and a big stock are two of, my, two of my favorite where I buy stock photos. And that gives you what you call royalty free images. An image with a royalty means every time that image is used, it, somebody has to pay for it. That's why you want to be real careful if you just go and steal a picture off of a blog. They may have paid to get that. So um, I'll put things like used with permission from my stock or licensed from big stock or that sort of thing, just so that I tell people. But I'm surprised how many people just go copy it verbatim. You can't just go copy stuff from others. Um, if it's That's plagiarism and we don't do that. So you can license this sort of thing. And, and sometimes you can contact the person and say, hey, you have permission to use this photo, or you have permission to use this blog post, and that's fine, but you never ever want to um, to steal a blog post or steal a photo. That's just, we don't do that. That's the, the wrong thing to do. And I'll tell you why in just a second. So I might be the kind of person who doesn't agree with copyright. It doesn't really matter if you agree with it or not, it exists. Um, and if you steal something or you plagiarize, you are violating copyright act and there are damages that can happen. And you know, a lot of times if you're just an anonymous regular person, they, the person who you've offended might um, just ignore you. But just even if you're doing a good thing, I've seen people who have websites just to help teachers and they think just because they're trying to be helpful, it's okay to copy and paste stuff from other people's blogs. But that is unethical. Um, a lot of times the best thing to do is to copy the first paragraph and link back to the original article. But you don't just ever copy the whole thing. That's just not something you're going to do. And um, there are potential for criminal penalties. Now, where this really um, gets you is, for example, if you upload a video to YouTube and you put popular music on that video, YouTube has a scanner because they're held responsible if they don't take it down. Um, and the penalties for them are pretty severe. So they'll just rip the audio off of your YouTube video and you'll wonder, well, my video's messed up. Um, well, that's because you chose to use some um, some audio that you weren't supposed to use. And even if you're a school or a, an individual, it's really hard to claim fair use with YouTube because they're held responsible by um, those they've copied from. So you have to just be real careful. It's just the right thing to do to be safe and not to take anybody's work. So today we've covered what is copyright and how long it lasts. What are the kinds of copyright and how can I copyright my own work? And remember your apps and other things that you post online, you should copyright. Um, if it's not stated, it's all rights reserved and you must obtain permission. So just because it doesn't state a copyright, uh, be especially careful with those. Um, how can I find works that I can use freely? We used Google, we used Flickr, but remember you can use all kinds of websites for this. Do I still have to give credit for the work? Of course you do. We're going to attribute, uh, give attribution for that. The name linked to the website. We learned how to buy licenses for professional work. And remember, you can always contact an author to get permission. What are the penalties of not following copyright? We learned a little bit about those. And it's just best to always follow copyright. Now, remember, consult a lawyer or a legal website to clarify the specifics. Uh, we're just covering generalities here. And I'm not offering legal advice. Um, never assume you have the rights. If in doubt, check it out. And let's just be ethical. I think many of us have had things copied. And um, it just is so, it, 
you hate to say it's unfair, but when you spend hours or you work so hard on something and somebody copies it, you just kind of feel cheated. So I encourage you students to think about how would you feel if you worked really hard on a paper and somebody else took that paper and turned it in as theirs and you didn't get credit. That wouldn't be fair. And it happens all the time. It's not the right thing to do. We want to be honest and we don't want to plagiarize. And we also want to give credit when people have done an awesome job. So good luck with copyright.